Jesus said, Man cannot live on bread alone, but from every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. You're listening to Daily Truth. Christians must hold to the position that if we truly believe the unborn child is fully human and carries, therefore, the same degree of sanctity of life, then they deserve the same measure of protection for those who have been born. And if we are to authentically say that we are going to have the same protections for the born human being as for the unborn human being, then we must have equal, the same penalties. One of the chief protections for a born person to protect them from anyone who would have the intent of doing them harm. One of the chief protections is that the one who might seek to do them harm, that person knows that if they go through with their malice and evil intent, there will be swift and severe consequences. Wherever we say this crime doesn't really garnish consequences. What we are saying, therefore, to all the evil people of the world is that it's open season on this person, that this person is up for grabs, that this person is an unprotected class of people. It's, it's like purge season. You, you can go out one night a year and commit homicide with no repercussions. And in America, you can go out 365 days a year, and you cannot commit homicide on anyone. But there is one oppressed class, truly, objectively, according to God's immutable standard, oppressed class, that you can harm and kill with impunity. And that's children, particularly in the womb. And how is it that you could do something so heinous as murder an unborn child and be absolved of any penalties? One of the chief ways that you can do this with absolution is because the primary people who do this are women. And women, as we know in our culture today, are sinless. The reason why abortion still stands is because there are two positions a culture can take, but you cannot take them simultaneously. The worship of women or the saving of babies. A culture can either worship women or save babies. You cannot do both. Our culture currently has chosen to worship women. We even are beginning within the pro-life side of things to entertain penalties for the abortion doctor, but never the woman, because she's the second victim. There are two victims, you see. Now, one victim is a murderer, and the other is removed with a vacuum cleaner. Well, tomato, tomato. Both victims, of course. And then we wonder when we see the rhetoric of seven victims in Nashville rather than six. Seven victims rather than six. Brothers and sisters, we cannot be naive. Let me connect the dots for you. Seven victims in Nashville rather than six? That's a straight line from that dot to the ERLC. Bart Barber, the SBC, the pro-life industry, that's the same rhetoric. It is the same narrative. Well, the real victim here is the person who murdered. It should come as no surprise to us when we quickly see from the White House in our nation, our hearts go out 
quoting right now. Our hearts go out to the transgender community who is under attack. Days, I think two days, maybe even just one day, after a member of the trans community, not all of them, but a member, literally attacked Christians. But who's the group under attack? I mean, that, that, is, that is a level of gaslighting that would make Orwell blush. He wouldn't even write it into one of his fictional stories because it's so unbelievable. You say, I mean, come on, you've got to have a little bit more artistic creativity if you're going to sell a book, if you're going to have a believable plot line, right? You can't write a narrative where the White House comes out within hours and says that the real victim is the murderer and that the, the group that was killed in cold blood is the oppressive group and this other group that literally killed is the oppressed. Now, that, that won't sell. It's not even believable within a sci-fi fantasy genre. And that's now the evening news.